What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, oh, other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing, this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes me white Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him, and some said, What does the Stabler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Oropagus, saying, Though we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all of the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Oropagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription. To the unknown God, what therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. To God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being as even some of our own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. But others said, we will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from their midst. But some men joined him and believed, among whom also were Dionysius, an Europodite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. 
the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning, Rez. You can have a seat wherever you are. Welcome to the sixth and final week of Eastertide and of our series in Austin as it is in heaven. We've been looking through the book of Acts, studying Acts, and really considering um, the life of these early disciples as they made sense of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're asking with them, what does uh, the, the resurrection of Jesus change in our life even still today? Well, as we've been doing this and I've been thinking about this, I've been asking, what does Jesus being raised have to do with heaven coming to earth? The name of our series in Austin is and is in heaven. And today, this morning, this final week of Easter, we're going to continue to unpack that together. You know, one of the most significant initiations into Austin culture that I had was going to a UT football game with my neighbors. And it was incredible. It was awesome. If you've ever been to one, you know what I'm talking about. It's electric. Um, if you've never been, you're missing out. You should totally uh, try one sometime. Everyone's wearing the right colors. Everyone's standing and sitting when they should. Everyone is denouncing uh, OU. Um, everyone is watching the game on the field. And everything, everyone is participating in the electricity of what's happening and scoring or um, bad calls by the referees. Everyone is engaged and involved. And they're all trying to do this while losing their voices, yelling and trying not to spill their drinks. And when the Longhorns score, the stadium erupts. And when bad things happen, the stadium erupts. It seems like we're kind of all in sync. Really quickly, when I experienced this for the first time in Austin, I was convinced that Austinites actually get liturgy and sacred things way more than we let on. Austinites love getting involved in something way bigger than themselves, something really important, something exciting. We're incapable, for instance, of having just okay music or just okay barbecue or just okay football. Austin is about exceptional things about all of those things. We are some of the best in the world. We pride ourselves in having the best of these things. Our saints, Stevie and Willie, Weird is our creed. This is just kind of what is normal in Austin for us, and people get it. There's so much in our town that's worth celebrating, and I know even now as I even talk about food trucks and just all those things that we really miss, it's even harder to hear because we haven't been able to get out and enjoy our, our town. But I just want to remind us, we do have a really wonderful place to live, and we really do love Austin. And it's, I know it's hard to miss out on right now, but Austin is so worth celebrating. But we'd also admit that there are parts of our town that need work. Things aren't quite right all over Austin. There's areas of our life as a community that need more goodness, more truth, more beauty. We run into those needs all over the place. And they're problems that are not just unique to Austin, but problems that cities all over the world struggle with. For all that Austin has going for it, and it has a lot going for it, there's infinitely more that God desires to bring to Austin, if you can imagine. Not only to Austin, not only to our neighborhood, but even to our own lives. God is bringing infinitely more in bringing heaven even to Austin. Now, this is kind of like the situation that St. Paul found himself in when he was in Athens, in Greece, at this hilltop, which was famous at that time for the most profound, the best of TED Talks regarding philosophy and arts and life, TED Talks-ish, um, at the time. This is where that happened on that hilltop at Areopagus. From that hill, if we could stand there with Paul today, even when we could stand with him when he was there, you'd be able to get this entire glimpse of uh, Athenian Greco-Roman culture, its worship life, the things that it loved. The, the, hills, the hillside and the landscape was scattered, peppered with altars, symbols of what made um, Athens and really Western civilization tick at that time. The Acropolis with the Parthenon, it was, it was amazing. And among all those altars, among that entire view of kind of the birth of Western civilization, Paul points out one altar, 
One altar to an, an, the unknown God is what it says on this altar. And Paul uses this as a window to enter into this world, this culture, exactly where they are, to meet them there, and to show them something that would challenge everything that they thought they knew was true and good and beautiful. St. Paul uh, describes the God who is creator, totally different from the world that we know, and yet the God who is compassionately and intimately involved in that world. The Epicureans were wrong. God wasn't far off and unreachable. The Stoics, the Stoics, they were wrong also. God wasn't within us as some sort of inner divinity that we had to discover. How could Paul make such a radical and exclusive claim disqualifying all other philosophical and religious claims so boldly? They looked for God in temples. They looked for God in the stars. They looked for God in altars. But Paul had a revelation for them to hear. This is what he says in Acts 17, verse 24. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. God isn't bottled up. He's not formulated or controlled by human beings or powers. He's not tied down to a national or ethnic or economic identity. He's not in debt to any ruler or any authority. He is infinitely above it all. He transcends it all. And yet, Paul continues in verse 27, he says this, God is actually not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Not only is God creator and Lord and above all, but he's actually the grounding of all of our life, all of our reality, our existence, the breath that we breathe. This was no TED talk. This uh, was not another God to add to the set of altars that existed at the time one option among many. This was news that the one true and living God who made himself known in Jesus of Nazareth was now being revealed to them. In Jesus, heaven and earth were coming together. They were made one, united in him. In him, in Jesus of Nazareth, this, this risen one, we see things as they should be. No longer heaven and earth ripped apart, but divinity and humanity together in one, Jesus of Nazareth. And friends, this is still the news that we have to unpack today. This is still who the living Jesus is, and this is still what God is up to in the world. Austin, very much like Athens, may not want to hear that. It may not be well received. They may not like organized religion or what they experience of Christian people. And believe me, um, I get that sometimes. But St. Paul still stands there asking, but what do you think of this risen Jesus? What do you think of him? His philosophical brilliance stumped the greatest minds of the ancient world and still does. His sacrificing love overpowered the most powerful empire of the day and still does. Jesus isn't just an ideology or some sort of philosophical worldview. It's more than a temple or religious jargon. Jesus is a living person in whom heaven and earth are one. They come together in him, fully revealed. Now think about this. In him, divinity and humanity, heaven and earth, forever together once again, never to be ripped apart. And this Jesus is present to Austin, to us in our lives, by his spirit in the reading of scripture. So much of what we do in the liturgy is a participation in this risen Jesus, heaven and earth being made present to us in the sacraments, 
in, in us, his church, Jesus is present. And through these things, he's making in Austin as it is in heaven. This is what happens when we cooperate with a God who is present and active in our lives and in this world. But let's just be real for a moment. How, if you think about your own life, how would this look to actually cooperate with a God who is bringing heaven to your own life and even to Austin? What if, and what would it look like if you weren't left guessing about what to do as you make sense of the world that we're now living in and the the day-to-day decisions that you have to make? What if your most important decisions, your hardest challenges, your deepest pains, in the midst of those things, there was Jesus guiding you, someone showing you how heaven is being brought near to you in those moments? Do we really believe that Jesus can still guide us even in the life that we have now. I mean, take for example, this whole quarantine situation. This has toppled many things that we thought were, we got used to. The, the kind of status quo, the norms that we were so comfortable with has been toppled and blown over. Can Jesus still guide us in this quarantine life, we might ask? Like the disciples in John from the gospel reading, how are we supposed to know the way through this situation, Jesus? How are we supposed to know the way that you are preparing for us, even in this life? Jesus doesn't offer us a way, among other ways. He's not giving us advice that is compatible with the temples and the gods and the altars of our world and our life whatever those may be. Jesus offers us the way, the truth, and the life, and not just in some sort of like intellectual way, but in a way that we can inhabit and practice and make decisions toward, a way we can actually live with him. Now let's just take it for a test drive, for instance. These are some of the things that I I notice that are so much in conversation right now. If our economy is weakened by our caring for human beings, The way of Jesus would challenge us to ask if this is an economy worth preserving. Man, if our wealth is too sacred to put under the care of Jesus, then we have to wonder if we really trust him to provide for us. If our worldview and our convictions are more shaped by society and news and online everything than they are by scripture, and meditating on the Lord's presence and prayer and fellowship with other Christians, those things, we have to ask then whose disciples are we really? If our rights and privileges take priority over over our love for other people and the vulnerable, we have to wonder if we are really prepared to take up our cross. Friends, Jesus does not tag along with our way with our truth or with our life. It's actually radically the other way around. Yes, God is intimately present to our lives, but he is never domesticated by them. Instead, we all have those ways that we are confronted by the way of Jesus. And we all have those ways, including myself, that we are called to believe in him and to follow him or this revelation of who Jesus is, the heaven and earth that's come to us, is revealed to us as a gift, as a total grace. And it's a good news kind of a gift that calls us to believe and enables us to actually participate with him who's making our lives new and who's making it in Austin as it is in heaven. May we, this morning, be those people who once again can put our trust in this risen Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the witness of God's people throughout the world for our Bishop Todd, our priest Sean, and all ministry leaders, for this gathering, for all the churches in South Austin, and for all of our ministry partners. Today we pray with our Diocese for Christ Church Cathedral in Plano, Texas, led by the very Reverend Paul Donison. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, for you have established peace amongst us in your risen Son. So in your good time, enable us all to stand reconciled before you. For President Trump, Governor Abbott, and Mayor Adler, that you would give them the power to lead with wisdom, grace, and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For your blessing, O God, on the soil, air, water, non-human life, and all those that labor on behalf of creation. Give us wisdom and reverence to use the resources of nature rightly, the generations yet to come may continue to praise you for your bounty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those working during the pandemic, healthcare workers, public servants, grocery store clerks, and those providing us critical services. Give them courage, keep them safe and healthy. We especially pray for Brandon, Beverly, Britt, Emily, Jody, and Cam. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. And by your spirit who continually seeks us out, remember those absent and displaced from us. For the sick, the elderly, and for all who suffer, and we pray for those vulnerable to or suffering from COVID-19 and ask that you deliver the world from this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and destitute, for prisoners and captives of South Austin, immigrants and refugees around the world, we pray for them to be delivered from all danger and oppression. O oh Lord, give them courage and hope in their trouble and bring them the joy of your salvation. Have mercy on us for the ways that oppression, racism, discrimination, and inequality persist in society and in our lives. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move that these divisions would be dismantled and healed, and that all may live in the justice and peace of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, born and unborn, enemy and friend, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. I invite you to kneel or stand as you're able. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. Turn to those you're uh, in the same room with and exchange the peace of Christ together. Send a text message to someone. Let them know that you're thinking about them and extend the peace of Christ to them. If you're alone at home, you are not alone. Your whole res family rushes into the room with you and gives you a big hug. Um, The peace of Christ be with you. I wish I could be there to greet you in the name of Christ. As we prepare to come to the offertory, let's offer our lives in thanksgiving to the Lord, opening ourselves up to the expectation of the resurrection life we have in Jesus, amen. God, from whom all blessings flow, and praise Him, all creatures here below. Lord, praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. And with with your your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift Lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to give give him thanks thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who is offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. 
who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, if you'll please join me in a prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, 
gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. By Christ in our heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. May it keep your body and soul into everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks everyone for joining us today. So today is the day we're gonna be having our all church meeting right after service. So hopefully you've seen the information on the Zoom ID and the link that's in the uh, church newsletter. You can also find that on Discord. So because we're having this meeting, we won't be having catechism, but we really hope you can join us and we're really looking forward to seeing your faces. Thanks so much.